Talk at TV political editor Kate McCann decided to find out what life was actually like on the front line as a nurse. And she is spending the day uh, in Chorley at the Chorley and South Ribble Hospital covering a shift with a nurse. I'm delighted to say she's uh, taking a quick tea break to join us right now. Good morning to you, Kate. <laughs> Good morning. Well, I can't have a tea break here because I haven't done anything yet, I have to admit, Julia. So, what time does uh, your shift start? Tea, but yes. <laughs> well, I mean, it, it, the, day, the nurses have been here, I mean, all night. There's a handover going on at the moment. Our shift, if you can call it that, I'm not sure you really can, uh, started. We've been here since about 6.30. But you're right that we're here on the Sellers ward and it's an elective surgery ward. So what you can see behind me is the area where patients would come before surgery, potentially after surgery too, once I've had those operations. And there are 16 beds on this ward. So quite, quite a number of patients will be coming through the hospital today to have those operations. And they are pre-scheduled. So we're not talking about emergency operations, we're talking about people coming in for things that they've been on a waiting list for, that they've been waiting to have. Some of them maybe for some time, but others, of course, uh, waiting for those operations. They've been uh, moved through the queue fairly swiftly. So yeah, we're here today to find out what it's like to work on the front line as a nurse because we spend a lot of time, Julia, talking about it in Westminster and not a lot of time doing it. We've seen all sorts this morning, people coming in, some people having breakfast if they've been here overnight, but lots of consultants, anaesthetists coming and going in between this ward and where surgery will happen later on today to assess patients, to check that they are ready, check if there's any complications and of course the nursing handover from the night shift. And Julia, I can take you through now because the ward is behind me, but actually just over the corridor here is where theatre happens. This is the operating theatre over here. And we're going to speak to Louise Gill, who is the matron for the ward. We've had um, two staff members ringing sick for today. I've also had a staff member ringing sick for the night shift. Um, it's my job as a matron, as a senior nurse, to make sure that we're safely staffed throughout all of the units. So I've had to look at staffing and look at acuity and make sure that we're safely staffed across all areas. And have you managed to do that? We have managed to do it. Um, it is a daily battle, um, sorting staffing out. Um, it's my job today, as well as matron of the day, to look at staffing, not only for Charlie, but also for Preston, which is what I'll be doing later on, to make sure that all areas are staffed. Yes, it's interesting, isn't it? I was going to say, uh, Kate, um, before you showed me that piece of uh, information from, uh, from matron Louise, um, whether there is a, a shortage today, whether it's a sort of daily battle, whether uh, there are things they can't do, uh, or whether the nurses who do come in have to do more as a result of just the rota being difficult to organise. They do, and it's one of the questions that I was asking this morning. What happens if you have to move staff around to different departments? And what you find here is that people are very willing to help each other out. They're willing to work on days off. They're willing to do more hours than they need to, to stay later, to make sure that things get done. But the reality is that, unfortunately, in some circumstances, if nurses are not used to working in a particular area or with a particular skill, then they might not be able to carry out those jobs. And ultimately, that means that things could get cancelled. Patients may even get turned away. And that's frustrating, not just for the nurses, but also for the patients, who many of whom have been waiting for quite some time to get through, to, to get to this point, to get that surgery that they want. So New vehicles. Talk TV's political editor Kate McCann is spending today working a shift at a hospital. She joins us now from Chorley and South Ribble Hospital in Lancashire. Kate, afternoon to you. Uh, when I say work in a shift, just to clarify, you're not a neurosurgeon for the day or something. No, sadly, I've not been allowed to actually do any proper work, and, and that is exactly how it ought to be for everybody concerned. <laughs> so, and I'm joined by the ward sister, Lindsay Farrer, who is here at the desk, because one of the most important things when people come back from surgery is that monitoring. Just yeah. tell us, what is it that you're doing this afternoon at this point in time, and yeah. why does it matter? So we've got several patients come back, so our nurses are all doing 15 minutes observations on these patients, just to make sure they're, they're not bleeding from any wounds that have been done, any incisions, uh, checking that they're passing good urine output and things like that, just monitoring slowly. I mean, we have had the pa patient this afternoon that has shown that the key to doing 15 minutes abs is so when they do de-escalate that we can manage that really quickly and um, put things in place. To, yeah. To, to it was a bit worrying being here earlier because you did have a patient, as you say, that, that went downhill a little bit and, and everybody sort of goes running to try and sort that out and that was picked up with one of those 15 minute observations. Mm. So 
It's a pretty busy place to be here. I know this has been all day and it's carrying on till 10 o'clock tonight. So what's your purpose in being there? What are you trying to find out? And what have you found out so far? Yeah, we are here until around 10 o'clock tonight and we are in the Sellers Ward, or that's where I've been all day. I'm actually in the hospital corridor right now. The ward we've been in is just over my right shoulder and the theatre where patients go to when they've been on the ward is just over my left, just through these double doors. You can see there, Stuart's moving the camera for you. Now, the reason we're here, Vanessa, is because we wanted to work out what it's like for nurses and frontline staff in the NHS day to day on a, on a pretty standard shift to see what staffing patterns are like, to see where the pressures are, to see what people feel like, because we spend a lot of time, don't we, talking about this in policy terms from Westminster, but of course it's very difficult for us to know exactly what's going on. And some of the themes that have come out today might be things you expect. Mm. Some staff have called in sick today, for example, and had to find cover for them. We've also had some, uh, you know, pressures around discharging patients, and we've been talking about what happens when ambulance workers go on strike and they can't provide that transport home for patients. If the Prime Minister was in front of you both now, what would be the one thing that could really make a difference to the way that your working day is at the moment? I would encourage uh, the Prime Minister or any MPs to come and walk the walk. So they need to come into the wards, they need to do a full shift with us to see what we experience on the acute side in ED, um, to really have a comprehensive picture of what we have to go through on a day-to-day -day basis. Well, yeah. the day team are about finishing up their shift and the night shift is about to come here into the ward. So anyone who's gone through theatre today and could go home, like the patient who has recently gone home from the room behind me, they will now have left the hospital, they will be doing in the next hour or so, and anyone who is staying overnight who maybe needs a little bit extra care there in a room just off to the side, we can't obviously film in there for obvious reasons, they will be looked after by the nursing staff here overnight on the ward. And then this ward will kick up again tomorrow and they will bring in a whole load of new patients who will come in for operations. They had 46 patients through the surgeries here today through the theatres and there was a whole range of different things that people had operated on. Many of them have been waiting on waiting lists for quite some time and the trust has acknowledged that they do have a bit of a backlog from COVID so one of the main focuses here is trying to move people through as quickly as possible. Earlier we spoke, she spoke to Sarah Cullen, the chief nurse at Lancashire Teaching Hospital Trust and asked her if she was supportive of the upcoming nurse strikes. Watch this. So um, we, as an organisation, voted to strike and I am supportive of those nurses that have used their right to vote. Um, we've been impacted by the strikes um, in the same way as others. So we've had activity uh, cancelled, patients stepped down uh, and um, during the times of the strike we have used families to support essential care of provision. Uh, but that's not been without its challenges. Um, I believe really strongly in the right for fair pay. I think that we, sh as a healthcare uh, service, need to be competitive um, if we are to be able to continue to meet the needs of our population. I think it's very sad that we've got to this point, uh, and I wish we hadn't had to strike, but unfortunately, uh, we are where we are. And what does it do for staff morale? It's quite demoralising. Um, I haven't met a nurse yet who is excited about striking. I think that um, most nurses would want to have reached a settlement outside of this situation. However, I also see nurses using food banks and are really struggling with um, the competing priorities of bringing up families and living. And so I feel it is important that we do recognise those issues. Well, <laughs> you, I think you've been on your feet and broadcasting for some 17 hours now. If you can stay on your feet a bit longer without getting blown over by the wind. You're pulling an even longer shift than some of those nurses. Well done for still being there. Tell me, because it must have been an absolutely fascinating day, what is the single biggest thing you've learned today? Yeah, it has been a really fascinating day, Tom, but I think the biggest thing for all of us, having spent the day here with nurses on the pre-op surgery ward, is that every single one of them, from the healthcare assistant to the consultants and the anaesthetists, they are all trying to do the best job that they possibly can, but they're fed up, they are tired, they feel like they have reached the end of their tether, and while they are all still incredibly proud of the job that they do, I think it's fair to say that they feel that the country isn't behind them in the same way that it was 
in the COVID pandemic. They hoped that things would get back to some kind of normality, but they haven't because there are huge backlogs in the NHS right now. And everybody you speak to, it comes back to staffing. At the end of the day, that's what they all feel would make a real yes, difference. Uh, I had a quick chat with West Eating before we came up here to Chorley. I'll let him speak for himself, but what we were talking about with the Shadow Health Secretary is what Labour's vision is for the NHS if Labour wins the next election. And I think one of the most interesting things for me, Tom, out of this interview is that West Eating is saying the model shouldn't be that you either go to a GP or a hospital like the one behind me, that really we need to be talking about more district nursing, maybe even doubling the number of district nurses. Just have a listen to what he thinks would make a real difference to the NHS. West Eating, you have really ambitious plans to overhaul GP surgeries and the way they work if you end up in government. What would you do if Labour were in office on hospitals? Yes, great question, Kate. And you're right, we are ambitious about what we do with GPs, with primary care, because that challenge and social care are directly linked to what's going on in hospitals. And I'm sure you know, you found that uh, one of the reasons we've got big delays in A&E, big ambulance delays, uh, bed occupancy at a far higher level than is safe, really, is because people struggle to get a GP appointment, end up in the front door, uh, they can't get the social care they need, so the beds end up getting occupied unnecessarily. I think what all of these things have in common actually is a workforce challenge. And the truth is, if you don't have enough doctors, nurses, other health professionals, you don't have a health service, which is one of the reasons why Labour's committed to the biggest expansion of NHS staff in history. And we will pay for it, because there's always a question people have, um, where will Labour get the money? We'll pay for it by abolishing the non-DOM tax status, which will raise around double what we need for 1.6 billion, which is the amount our workforce pledge will cost. And, and that's the kind of long-term workforce plan the NHS needs if we're going to avoid sticking plasters constantly, which as we can see, aren't making enough of a difference for patients. Do you think the NHS is now in crisis? I think the NHS is under considerable pressure and it certainly was um, over between Christmas and, and the new year. We've put in, in place a number of measures uh, to address the issue now, that 500 million discharge mm. funding, an extra 250 million to in effect block book uh, yeah. care beds. The system's under, under huge pressure, um, but, but I'm, I'm not gonna use that word because actually the vast majority of people every single day get excellent care and excellent service from our NHS. Have I got work to do to make sure that we build resilience, not just now, but for next winter? Of, of course I do. And there mm. were things that were particularly unique this year like flu for example I mean over mm. between Christmas and New Year had around 5,000 people in hospital with yeah. flu but there are the thousands before, of extra people dying I mean the, the excess death figures are really worrying the ambulance wait times are, are, are you know in some cases worse than people have ever thought would happen how is that not a crisis it, it, it's certainly huge pressure on the system and uh, and I'll be the first to say that some of the ambulance response times in December in particular were unacceptable they're unacceptable to me they're unacceptable to you and yeah. they'll be unacceptable to many of your viewers Thank you.